Welcome to today's live stream. It is number 84 and it is it's Wednesday. It's October 25th and today's topic is how to create professional 2D drawings. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today's live stream. If you're watching this, you're watching the re I said that too early. You might be watching the recording, but we already got a couple of people in here. We got Lucas, we got Isaac in here already. Appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day uh, to, uh, I see I got a light that wasn't turned on. Is that better? Maybe not. All right, <laughs> a little dark. So, thank you so much for taking the time. Let's uh, let's jump into it uh, here and talk about some 2D drawings. Kind of like jumping on from uh, from yesterday's part. So yes, one thing I just got to clarify quickly here. So if you're coming here watching the drawing, we're going to get into that. But there was one question. Um, yesterday we did this part here. We modeled up from scratch. So if you're interested in doing that and you missed that, uh, go back and look at uh, live stream number 83. Um, but one of the questions I got, a couple of people was asking, if I roll back down here on the, on the tree, that I, um, I added this shell command in here to kind of shell out the inside. It's probably hard to see because... I turned it black, but a couple of people was asking, you know, didn't it only shell in uh, the straight portion and not uh, kind of like the full radius? It did not, and the reason for that is if we go one step back here, when we created this revolve, let me go in and edit it. Um, it it is set to join, but it means that these two uh, solids will join into one body. So when I then shelled it out, everything got shelled out. Uh, we could actually do a quick uh, section view here just so kind of like can prove it. Uh, you can kind of see here how it is all shelled out. So just want to make sure that, that, you know, we straighten that out. Okay, 2D drawings. So we got to talk a little bit about 2D drawings. Um, and the purpose of, uh, of this live stream today is how do we create 2D drawings? We've covered some things about 2D drawings in the past in the live stream, but how do you make your drawings look more professional? So if you uh, have to you know, send things out to um, a place for them to work with your 2D drawings, like a machine shop or something like that, what is something you need in there? That's what we're gonna take. We're gonna use this part. So uh, from in, we have our part here that we have modeled up. Uh, we're going to go to the drop down and we're going to go to drawings and we're going to select here from design. You can also do animations, uh, it like exploded view of an assembly or something. We covered that in the past in the live stream too. So, um, you know, just search the live streams. Um, oh, it's going to ask me here to save because now I, I move things around. That's okay. We'll just save this quick. You get this dialog box. Um, we are going to do from scratch. Um, I am going to switch mine to ASME from ISO. And the reason for that is the way the view gets projected uh, is a little bit different between uh, the American standard and the ISO standard. I'm going to keep it in metric though, just for, for fun of it. Um, and let's go ahead here and hit OK. And our drawing gets uh, created. Now, and we have been through this before in other live streams, so I'm not going to get too much into the specifics. Uh, we talked about how you can create your custom title blocks in the past, um, how to use uh, bill of materials. So I'm not really gonna cover that too much with this one. But when it starts out, it starts out want to place a base view. Um, I'm actually gonna just cancel out of that for a second because I'm gonna talk about a couple of other things when it comes to um, to 2D drawings and what's kind of important. So if you're not kind of like familiar with uh, with a lot of with 2D drawings, uh, just some best kind of I would call it practices. And by the way, I gotta be upfront. If there's any of you guys who have a lot of experience with 2D drawings and have anything to add to this, do me a favor and put it down in the comment area uh, or in the live stream. You know, let's share the knowledge. I am taking, I am definitely not a professional drafter, but but I have created a lot of drawings in my time on the shop floor. So I'm gonna at least uh, kind of like add my two cents to that, to this. So um, 
first thing I want to talk about is a little bit about the, the title blog over here. So um, I talked about we can detail it um, or you can create your, your, your own title blog if you want to. We covered that before. I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one. I'm going to highlight it and I'm just going to double click and we get the, uh, the menu here. Now I'm going to insert an image. Uh, I'm just going to pull in the Autodesk logo and you will see that it snaps two corners. So I can bring that in there. And be aware of you can scale it and rotate your logos and things like that. I'm just going to skip that for right now. Um, there is approved by, uh, date approved by, checked by, date checked in here. Um, what normally would be another person than the one who draws it up. Um, now, I am actually going to change this uh, to just be my initials. That is common practice on 2D drawings that you're using initials just normally because there's not uh, that much space in there um, also the date is in there which is fine the name of the project uh, so it, it pulls that uh, right from uh, from your the name of what project the part is, is in and then it pulls in the name of your part here um, so that is uh, and now I jumped out of it so now I get to to do it all again because I didn't place it. That was silly. Silly of me. Okay. And it's always faster the second time you gotta do everything, right? Isn't that what they say? So L dot C, there we go. Um, now some people would say that everything should be capitalized in a drawing, but I have actually seen it both ways. So I'm just gonna leave this. And I'm going to leave the rest of it here. So now we kind of like got uh, the title blog down here. And you will see that there's some other information that can be added in here. Uh, you know, that could be uh, many times there'll be like something like a, um, a drawing number in here. I can put in my pin code. Okay, so that those things can all be, be added in here. The other thing that I want to show you um, is that many times you will also add notes uh, to um, to drawings, and they are actually quite important um, because maybe we just talk about quickly about that. You know, uh, 2D drawings by themselves, or, or the 3D model by itself, you can say it doesn't have all the information you need. It sort of does, right? You have the 3D model all modeled up, you can definitely, you know, go in and measure it and do different things with it. But the drawing is kind of this piece of paper that goes with it that maybe could have some additional information in there. So one of them would be a note, and you can insert the notes here. Now I'm just gonna cheat a little bit um, in here and just copy uh, a note in, just because I'm, I'm not, you will be tired of, uh, of watching me uh, kind of typing, I think. <laughs> Um, so let me just see here, find my note on my other screen. Here we go. I should have had that copied. So uh, I'm going to place a note here on the drawing. I'm just going to make a big box, doesn't really matter. Control V to put in uh, my note here and let me close that out. So uh, the note here, uh, this is normally like anytime as a, as a machinist or something like that, when you're getting these notes and drawings, this is really where you gotta pay attention because a lot of great information is in here and this is important stuff. So uh, you will see here that my note is referring to that dimensions and tolerance are according to the ASME. So that's the standard uh, out there. You can get a copy of the standard uh, that um, you know this is here. Um, I think it costs some money to get that. You can probably find a lot of them on, online, I would think. Some of the things that is important to point out is like it specifies number four that all dimensions are in millimeters. That's an important piece of information. Um, number six talks about surface roughness, so you could put something in there. Um, number eight talks about uh, internal uh, corners. So, uh, you know, that could be important. And then something like number nine is something that I just wanted to quickly touch about. It says here, if anodized is specified, dimensions apply after anodized. So this is some of the things that you have to watch out for if you're getting 2D prints, um, is that if this part needs some kind of a surface 
apply to it. For example, now I know this is a plastic spoon we're using today, but if like you had a metal part that needed to be anodized, uh, that an anod anodization, the anodize <laughs> will add a little bit of extra material to your part. So what, uh, you know, this note is saying that all the dimensions that we're going to place on this drawing are going to be after the anodize, but means that the guy who actually maybe is machining the part have to take that thickness into consideration. And you do that sometimes, like if you see this note, you have to find out how thick is the anodize. And normally they're like very small, but you will actually machine parts undersized. So when they come back, they are within tolerance. So these notes and the title block is extremely important uh, to kind of get in there and, and kind of what you expect to be on a drawing like this. This is kind of like the recipe for, for making the part. All right, so now let's start placing our spoons. I'm gonna go up and catch up where, the, where we were when I started this by inserting a base view and I can just do it up here and my spoon comes back in. Now, one thing that is kind of interesting with this also just so you're aware of is right now we're looking at the part from front now what this is in here these different front top bottom is all coming from our model so um if i actually cancel out of this we go back to the model here is the model we had before you would actually see if you look up on the view cube that what I'm expecting the model kind of like to look like, like this, I want, I want the opening to be up, is actually inside of here at the bottom. Now, done live streams about how you can flip all that around, so we've covered that before, but, um, and I'm not gonna change it for this, I'm literally just gonna make sure that when I go into the base view, that I'm changing this to a bottom, because that's actually uh, what I want here. And uh, when I got that base view, I can just place it wherever I want the model and I can hit okay. And we kind of like got our first uh, um, our first view, I guess is what we want here. Now from this, you're gonna be creating projected view. The idea in a 2D drawing is to show all the necessary information with the least amount of clutter. So you wanna be kind of like careful about how many views you're placing. So I'm gonna go up here and do a projected view and I'm gonna select our base view that we just placed and drag down and you will see here that now we kind of like get a projected view from that. Now it's actually ready to apply more views from this but I'm just gonna hit enter to place that first view uh, right here. Um, and this comes into in the beginning when I selected between uh, ASME or ISO, it depends on how these view gets projected. So just make sure that you stick with one or, or the other. Now it's also important to know, we can see here from this side view, we can see these dotted lines in here. So that means that it, it shows us that there's something going on inside of this. Now, um, like I said, all this is specified in standards. I would probably prefer not to have dotted lines in there, um, mostly because in, in, in standard drawing practice, you do not dimension two dotted lines. So they are only to kind of like represent something in there. Uh, so what I can do is I can right click and I can say edit view, and then I can select that view and this box comes up here. And right now up here, it says that the view is coming from the parent. I can switch that over to just show the visible edges and you will see kind of like how that cleared up. So that's how I want that. Now I'm gonna create another projected view. So I'm gonna go up and create another projected view here and select the view we just created. And I'm gonna drag sideways this time and I'm gonna place that view. And again, it will start letting me project other views from there. Whatever you got the view you want, just hit enter. And, and now we kind of like got the end. So this view is kind of like as we were looking towards that other one uh, right here. Now, we have some, some tight details going on uh, in here on this part, right? Remember that we are looking handle. So one of the things we can do to kind of like help ourselves is we can actually also create detailed views. So I'm gonna go ahead here and create a detailed view of this. And I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna select what view do you want to use. And I wanna use this view here. 
and then it wants to draw a circle around it. So I'm going to place right in the center, left click, and you'll see here how I kind of like get this uh, detail view capture icon. And when I do that, um, I get a view that is, well, you'll see that it's scaled up. So this actually shows the real scale of the part. So what a, a, a detail view will let you do, and you can place that wherever you kind of like want, uh, what it will let you do is create a view that is a little bit bigger than the original view, uh, gives you a little bit easier to place uh, dimensions. And you will see that the A over here specifies that this is detail A, so this belongs to that. Now, with this here, I think we're about ready to start adding uh, some dimensions to uh, our, our scoop here, our coffee scoop. Um, and there's a couple of things that I think is very important. Like, I just want to make sure that I at least kind of cover here. And that is that um, there's a, you want to place all the dimensions on the drawing that you need to be able to create the part in 3D or in real life. So one trick that I have actually used is that when I go in here now to dimension all this, put all the dimensions in there that uh, you you think you need and then before I actually send the drawing to the customer I'll go in and model up that part again and only using the drawings or the, the dimensions on that drawing and that's a way for me to find making sure that I have all the dimensions on there to actually model the part because if I can model the part then most likely you can also uh, manufacture the part that's one rule that you have to have all the dimensions on there that is needed, it might be obvious. Uh, the other thing though that is important is you generally don't want to place two dimensions on, uh, a dimen two dimensions on two different views that does the same thing. So this is kind of like, of course, helping on, uh, on, you know, making things not cluttering up, but it's also can add some confusion. So that's kind of like two rules to keep in mind when we go in and, uh, and add some dimensions. Now the dimensions are sitting right up here, so we can actually start adding uh, some different dimensions in here. So I might just go over and look at our first base view, and one is maybe easy is to add, uh, you know, the 46 to the outside diameter, and maybe the 41 to um, our inside diameter here. Um, another thing that you might find is that uh, it can be nice to use these center marks when it comes to specify certain things. So center marks here, uh, these center marks shows you that there's something round uh, that you're working with. So if I click on center marks and I place that inside the circle, you will see that I kind of like get a center mark and I can use that to dimension with. However, when you look at this right now, adding that center mark kind of makes this 41 to look a little bit out of place in a way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on that 41 and I can actually just grab it and I can move it you know, somewhere else if I want to. So I can place it outside, that might be a little bit better uh, for that. Next thing I'm gonna add is a length here. So I'm gonna go over and hit the, the dimension tool or hit D or the, hit the dimension tool up here. And I'm gonna select the center of our um, scoop here, our center mark, and go over here and select an and right down here. Now you will see that as I'm moving this, that it's it's in an angle right now, 143.06. But it actually depends on where your mouse is. See how it will switch depending on where I'm placing uh, my mouse. So wherever I'm going around, uh, we should be able to catch 43. There we go. You see how that now it, it just changed it up to, to be straight. And you can just place the dimension there uh, where you want it. And then you can always go ahead again and drag it wherever, wherever you want. Uh, now, I might actually keep it up there on top just because that kind of like keeps it away from other uh, dimensions, other places. Um, another thing I might add to this view up here is we have these different radiuses. So I added a note before using this text out here, but there's actually also a text with leader in here. So I could either 
uh, place a dimension where I'm measuring that radius, or I could also click on this and I could place a leader uh, just from right here, and then I could type in a dimension. So I could type in 0 0.1, type in rad, and then uh, many times what you will do here is you will type in TIP dot, I should probably keep everything capital. So a rad, and then typical uh, means that um, if you see any radiuses that is not specified, so we have all these inside radiuses and things like that, that that means that this is a typical radius uh, around there. Okay, with, uh, with that done, uh, maybe let's move down and look at this view down here. A couple of things we might want to uh, might want to add to, to this part. So another thing here is we haven't specified this radius. Now it is a full radius, but you know it's kind of hard uh, to see. Another thing I can do is I can place the dimensions from that center of that radius up to our edge up here. And uh, oh, I did it. Do see here? See, it's fourteen point five. I picked the wrong thing. It's actually not that intersection there. It would actually been the top. Forgot that we had a little radius in there. So select the center point and make sure that you come up here and you select the right end point. So now it should be 15. Um, and that kind of like makes sense there. So that is good. Um, now, one thing I realize as I'm doing this is there's also a radius uh, on the inside. There's a radius on the outside and on the inside of the top here, if you remember, if you watched the live stream yesterday. <laughs> um, so right now, we can see this radius here, but we can't see the one inside. Um, so we actually probably want to add another view. Um, let me move this view down, down to about here. So be aware that you got a move command up here. So I'm gonna select this view I'm going to select transform and I can just select anywhere kind of like on this model and I can drag that view down just like that. That gives us kind of like, um, you know, now these are also kind of like in line with each other. And then we can do what is called a section view, um, which means that we kind of like going to cut through a model and look at that. So I'm going to click on section view and I'm going to select the view that I want to cut. I'm going to take the base view and you'll see it kind of like get a letter next to me. And wherever I kind of like want my line to start, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to left click, drag it over, and I'm going to view kind of like that way. Now, it will actually let you continue doing these section views with uh, a lot of different kind of like angles on it. But I'm just going to leave it at just one straight line. So I'm going to hit OK. And you will see that when I'm dragging down, um, depending on where you're looking at this part, we'll get a view uh, right there. And what this means is that where these arrows are is kind of like we're looking straight in at the model, cut through the center. So now we will actually see that we have these inside uh, radiuses that we can now specify. Now I also notice when I do this that it kind of messed up a little bit up here. This is one of the things you're always fighting when you're doing 2D drawings. It's kind of like keeping things neat. Uh, but I can, of course, click on the section view here and I can grab this little thing and I can actually drag it out here so I'm kind of like cleaning up and, and keeping things somewhat uh, nice looking so it's easy to see. So now we can go in here and we can apply um, the dimensions uh, for that radius. So I can zoom in here and uh, I can select that uh, radius here for uh, the inside, giving you an idea that that is what uh, should be here. Um, you could also uh, do another one on the outside to show that they're both um, uh, 50, um, a 50, 0.5 um, millimeters. I'm just gonna leave that right now. Now I did um, another thing I want to show. We did put up here the outside and inner side diameter. So it should actually be obvious what uh, the thickness of this wall would be. But I think if I was going to do this just to make it a little bit easier for somebody, I would actually place uh, that two and a half because it's pretty 
important. And if I was doing this, I would definitely be be kind of like looking uh, looking for that. Another thing before we're wrapping uh, this last thing up, also be aware of that if you double click on a dimension, uh, you get the dialogue up for that dimension. We can actually control things like primary, uh, um, how many decimals uh, you want uh, after the part. So this is where you can kind of like control that. But also in here, you can add like tolerances. So maybe there was some kind of a tolerance on this uh, this part here uh, that we wanted to specify. We had a live stream uh, early on talking about uh, tolerances in 2D drawings. The last thing, oh, and I don't like how that text is sitting right on top of there. I'm gonna grab that. Let's move that up a little closer so that can be up there. The last thing I wanna do to this part here, uh, and I think that, that would kind of cover it, is to add the last dimensions to the end here. Uh, so here, I'm gonna go in and apply a dimension to the outside diameter. So that was a radius of, of 10, if you remember. Um, and then we had a, another dimension in here. So we can place that one. And I'm trying not to have my text kind of like cut over lines. Um, and I think also I need a dimension for this out here. So I'm gonna actually use another center mark. So then I get a mesh up as the center of this one. So now I can place a dimension from, uh, from here to the center of this one here. Oh, I didn't get a center mark in there. So we can place those two from there to there. I think um, I think that might be it. Oh, I probably would also have to dimension where this one is. So we probably would do some. Th so here is an interesting thing. Right here we have the outside radius. Be aware of you can create uh, extensions. Uh, virtual shops is called. So be aware of you can do that too. So you can dimension uh, to those virtual shops. Uh, so here we could place a dimensions up from the center here and also uh, maybe from the center to the virtual shop there, this way out here, just giving us that dimension um, right there. Oops, move it up a little bit I like that. So this here, I think that that's a fairly good, um, fairly good drawing. What do you think? Uh, some of you guys who are, uh, are doing a lot of this stuff definitely be more than welcome to add things in, uh, in the like. Oh, and one other thing I should say here is this point, uh, we can go up here and we can output it as a PDF. So you can click here and, uh, we could now output this as a, as a PDF uh, somewhere where we can we can print it print it out, uh, and that's how we kind of like would, would hold on to that. Man, we are right like two minutes from the half half an hour mark. Don't forget down in the description area you will find my email address uh, lars.christensen@autodesk.com. Any future topics for these live streams? Definitely appreciate them. Tomorrow, same time. We're gonna talk about sheet metal, so that should be uh, should be interesting. I actually have a part of thing I'm gonna do that one of you guys uh, sent to me. So I hope that this was useful, kind of like taking yesterday's and kind of like building on it. Um, I definitely think that uh, you know this would be a drawing that um, you know I think I'll be somewhat happy uh, receiving, having you know the information on that you need uh, to be able to uh, to make this part. Hope it was useful. As always, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. If you don't like this, let me know. Um, and if you haven't already, of course, on the YouTube, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. And uh, jump into the live stream and say hi to uh, the 99 people we have in there. Thank you so much.